Today's lesson is 1.5, square roots and real numbers. We are going to try to evaluate expressions containing square roots, classify numbers within the real number system. All numbers that can be represented on a number line are called real numbers and can be classified according to their characteristics. Real numbers include rational numbers and irrational numbers. Rational numbers are any values that can be written as a ratio, which include terminating decimals, repeating decimals. Integers would be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. Within the integer, integers category would be whole numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, and natural numbers, which are often referred to as counting numbers. If you start counting, you start with one, two, three. Irrational numbers are square roots that we do not have a perfect square for. They are never ending decimals, such as pi. Here's a better explanation. Um, the natural numbers are the counting numbers, one, two, three, etc. Whole numbers are the natural numbers and zero, so zero, one, two, three, etc. Integers are whole numbers and their opposites. Mrs. Repchinsky likes to say it starts with an I, and I can see these on a number line. That's a great way to remember integers. Rational numbers are anything we can write in the form A divided by B, where A and B are both integers and B cannot be zero. For instance, one half. 7 over 1, 9 over 10. Those are rational numbers. Terminating decimals and repeating decimals are both rational. All right, so both of these are still rational. Um, you can write these with a finite number of digits. This decimal ends. All right, the repeating decimals, you're going to have to put a repeating decimal form with a block of one or more digits that repeat continuously. So 1.3 repeating, 0.6 repeating, 2.14 repeating. Those are all still rational. The only time we go to irrational are square roots of numbers we don't know and never ending decimals. I could write 1.23 dot dot dot. That's signaling irrational numbers. All of these are real. Here's another visual. If you fall in the natural number category, you're also a whole number, also an integer, also a rational, also a real. So if I said the number two, I would have to say natural, whole, integer, rational, real. That is quite a few classifications. If I started with a whole number, zero, zero would be whole, integer, rational, real. Simply adding zero to the set of natural numbers. Integers, negative six, it would be an integer, rational, and real. I like this visual, so you see that it falls into the following categories. And if we're just staring at rational, let's say we have the number one-third. One-third would fall into rational and real. Irrational would just be irrational and real, the square root of two. We do not know the square root of two as a whole number, so it would just fall here. Notice, it's either rational or irrational. It cannot be both. All right, so let's practice this. This negative 32. I know the negatives don't come into play until integers. So negative 32 would fall in the integer category and through these three buckets. So integer, you can abbreviate, rational or rat, and real would be the three categories. The number five falls all the way at the top. And it's gonna have natural, whole, integer, rational, and real. That is quite a few classifications. Natural, whole, integer, rational, and real. Wow. Let's practice a few more. If you wanna try, you can pause the video. Seven and four ninths. Crazy fractions, but it is written as a ratio, so it's going to start in rational and real. Only two classifications for this first one. Negative 12. As soon as you see the negative, I, I lean towards integer. So it would be integer, rational, real. You're going to have to memorize these classifications. Square root 10. That's a square root I don't know. So it would go into irrational, which also falls into real. If you notice, they're all real. Let's sum up this whole lesson. Number one, if you evaluated the square root of 144, that would equal 12 because 12 squared is 144. Negative one times the square root of 64 would be negative eight. 
If you have the square root of 9 over the square root of 49, I know the square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of 49 is 7, so I'm at 3 sevenths. Negative 1 times the square root of 1 fourth is going to be negative. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. The negative sign could go out in front of the fraction bar or with the numerator or with the denominator, but there can only be one negative sign. For 5, uh, if they're giving you the area of a square, you simply need to take the square root to, defi to find the side length. So the square root of 68, I know that's between the square root of 64, which is 8, and the square root of 81, which is 9. It's clearly closer to 8. This one asks you to go to the nearest tenth. I won't do that. We won't do that on a quiz or test. You could just say closer to 8. For those of you that really want to get a solid answer, it would be 8.2. And you just try that by multiplying. You would have to check 8.2 squared, which is 67.24. 8.3 squared, which is 68.89. And it's closer to this one if you had to do it by hand. All right, a few more practice problems. The number one would fall in this top bucket and get one, two, three, four, five classifications. So natural, whole, integer, rational, and real. A negative repeating decimal, that still is a rational number because I could write that as a ratio. So we're at rational and real. The square root of 500, I don't know. It's not a perfect square, so I would just be an irrational land, which is irrational and real. Sometimes they try to trick you. If I wrote the square root of 25, they're really talking about the number five, so it would fall into all these categories. I hope you enjoyed this video lecture.